deadly strike. Israeli attack on residential block causes massive crater in Jabalia refugee camp, killing and wounding dozens. Touching tribute. Friends co-stars release a joint statement in the wake of Matthew Perry's sudden demise. Church scandals. In a shocking revelation, commissions find Spanish church guilty of sexually abusing at least 200,000 minors. Strutting the runway. Lagos showcases indigenous fashions from Africa at the 13th Lagos Fashion Week. This is Adhaderana World News Tonight, reporting from Colombo. Here is Anuradhi Vikramasinghe. A very good evening and thank you for joining us on World News. Today we start off in Bangladesh as violence erupted calling for a fair election. At least two people have been killed and dozens injured in clashes in Bangladesh between anti-government protesters and security forces. The violence erupted in the capital Dhaka during protests calling Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina to resign ahead of elections due in January. Police said those killed belonged to the opposition Bangladesh Nationalist Party but gave no details. BNP official Shariful Alam said that they were shot dead by the police. He further told the Dhaka Times that the two activists were attending a rally in a central district of Kishorenganj. He said one activist died on the spot while the second died at a hospital. Local media reported that about 50 people were injured, including about 15 police officers. Kishoreganj police chief Mohammad Russell Sheikh had said that BNP activists attacked the police who opened fire in self-defense. The opposition says a free and fair poll is not possible under Ms. Hasina. Earlier this week, police broke up a rally in Dhaka calling for her to step down. One police officer died and more than 100 people were injured. The authorities charged BNP Secretary General Mirza Farkul Islam Alamgir and more than 150 other party members over the death. Dhaka police say that at least 1,480 opposition activists have been arrested and charged with violence since the 21st of October. The PNP have put the number of arrests at 3,000 as of now. The Office of the UN Commissioner for Human Rights said that it was deeply concerned by the unrest and called on all political actors to make clear that such violence is unacceptable. Ms. Asina, the daughter of Bangladesh's first president, has been in power since 2009 and has been accused of targeting political opponents, which she denies. Tens of thousands of Afghan refugees have begun returning to Afghanistan amid a looming deadline set by Pakistan. Islamabad initiated a controversial move to expel undocumented Afghan refugees starting on the 1st of November 2023. The move has sparked concerns of sparking a broader humanitarian crisis in the country already in economic tatters. Mohammed Rahim is boarding a bus from Karachi to the Afghan border. He is one of thousands of Afghan nationals being forced to return to Afghanistan under Taliban rule before a November 1st deadline that Pakistan set for undocumented migrants to leave the country. Rahim was born in Pakistan, married a Pakistani woman and raised his children in the port city. But he has no Pakistani identity documents. If the government had not ordered us, I would not have gone there in my entire life because I can neither speak the Afghan language nor are we used to living with those people. My entire life has been spent here. I was born here. My children have grown up here. We know the city of Karachi very well. We don't want to go back. If we had not been ordered out, we would never leave all our lives. The Taliban government in Afghanistan said some 60,000 Afghans returned between September 23rd and October 22nd from Pakistan. Pakistan is home to over 4 million Afghan migrants and refugees, about 1.7 million of whom are undocumented, according to Islamabad. Many arrived after the Taliban retook Afghanistan in 2021, but a large number have been present since the 1979 Soviet invasion. Azizullah is a bus service operator in the Saurabh Goth area, home to one of Pakistan's largest Afghan settlements. He said he had laid on extra services to cope with the exodus. The expulsion threat came after suicide bombings this year. The government said they involved Afghans without providing evidence. 
Islamabad has also blamed them for smuggling and other militant attacks. More than a dozen migrants told that police harassment has ramped up since the expulsion threat. Karachi authorities told that any instances of harassment were non-systemic and that offenders would be investigated. But interviewed refugee families, community leaders, authorities and aid workers, who said Islamabad's threat had torn families apart and pushed even Afghans with valid papers to leave. And while Pakistan says it won't target Afghans with legal status, migrant advocates say many with proper documents also find themselves being targeted. Majida Azuzula was born in Pakistan. She fell ill earlier in October and her husband refused to help her pick up medication at a nearby pharmacy out of fear of detention. Sama Abbas works for the Sin Human Rights Defenders Network, which is helping 200 Afghans seeking to remain. There is a chaos in the Afghan camps in Karachi, and the, uh, the people are not uh, leaving their home, they are not leaving their community because they have a fear of becoming a victim of state harassment. The Pakistani Interior Ministry did not immediately return a request for comment. The Foreign Ministry said in a statement that the expulsion plan was compliant with international norms and principles. Moving on to India now, several opposition leaders in India have claimed to have received an alert from Apple warning them of state-sponsored attackers trying to compromise their iPhones. The Congress party has accused the government of being behind the snooping, which the ruling BJP has denied. Apple has responded by stating that the attackers are well-funded and their techniques are sophisticated. The company also said that it cannot provide information on the specific causes of these warnings. The BJP called the allegations baseless. Apple has warned several Indian opposition leaders and journalists that their iPhones may have been targeted by state-sponsored attackers. The technology giants sent messages to those likely to be hit, saying that if the device is to be compromised by a state-sponsored attacker, they would be able to remotely access sensitive data, communications or even the camera and microphone. Among the politicians who received the alert were Trinamool Congress parliamentarian Mahua Moitra and Asaudin OIC and Congress leader Shashi Tharoor and its spokespersons Pawan Kira and Supriya Srinath. Moitra, a former investment banker, has been leading the opposition's charge on Prime Minister Narendra Modi for his alleged connections to billionaire Gautam Adani, one of Asia's richest men. In January this year, Hindenburg Research, a United States-based company specializing in short-selling, published a report accusing the Adani Group of engaging in stock manipulation and accounting fraud for decades. The company denied the allegations, calling the report malicious. The Securities and Exchange Board of India is investigating the allegations against the Adani Group, but there has not been any breakthrough. Earlier this month, a parliamentarian belonging to the ruling Bharatiya Janata Party accused Moitra of asking questions targeting the Adani Group in Parliament in exchange for bribes and gifts. While Moitra denies the charges, a parliamentary ethics committee began hearing the matter last week. The other Indian politicians who received the alert from Apple include Sitaram Yachari of the Communist Party of India, Samajwadi Party Chief Akhilesh Yadav, Aam Admi's Party's parliamentarian Raghav Chada and Shiv Sena Member of Parliament Priyanka Chaturvedi. All the politicians, excluding OIC, are members of the India Alliance formed by nearly two dozen opposition parties to take on Modi's Bharatiya Janata Party-led bloc in the general elections next year. Shiv Sena Party's Chaturvedi told media that it was a concerted attack on opposition leaders using sophisticated spyware to silence their voices. Siddharth Varadarajan, the founding editor of independent news website The Wire, and Sri Ram Kari, resident editor of the Deccan Chronicle newspaper, also said that they received similar warnings from Apple, as did Samir Saran of the Observer Research Foundation, a New Delhi-based think tank. The Wire was part of a 2021 investigation by 17 media outlets and Amnesty International Rights Group that alleged the Indian government was using Pegasus, a spyware made by Israel's cyber intelligence company NSO Group, to snoop on opposition politicians, dissident journalists and activists. 
Among the people the investigation named were Rahul Gandhi of the Congress, former Indian Election Commissioner Ashok Lavasa and former Central Bureau of Investigation Director Alok Varma. The Indian government denied the allegations and India's Supreme Court in August 2022 said some malware was found on five of the 29 phones its panel examined. but it was not clear if it was pegasus and now for updates on the israel hamas war israel conducted an air strike at a refugee camp in gaza killing dozens of palestinian civilians in the meantime hamas says that it will release some foreign hostages in the coming days an israeli strike on a refugee camp in jabalia in gaza on tuesday has killed dozens and injured hundreds more The Israeli military says the airstrike was part of a successful operation to kill Hamas's top commander Ibrahim Biari. However, the militant group denied that one of its leaders was at the camp and has instead accused Israel of a heinous crime against safe civilians, children, and women. Initial reports from Gaza's health ministry says at least 50 people were killed in the strike. Meanwhile, according to the General Authority for Crossings and Borders in Gaza, Egypt is set to receive 81 Gazans who have been severely wounded via the Rafah border crossing. According to the AFP, citing an Egyptian medical official, medical teams in Egypt will be at the Rafah crossing to examine the cases coming from Gaza and determine the hospitals they will be sent to. Gaza's health ministry says more than 8,500 Palestinians have been killed since the armed conflict began on October 7th. Hamas says it will release some foreign hostages in the coming days, but did not elaborate further. A spokesman for Hamas's armed wing, Kassam Brigades, said Tuesday that they have informed intermediaries that they will be releasing the foreign hostages soon. More than 230 people, including Israeli soldiers, civilians, and foreigners from several countries, are being held by the militant group. And amid the fierce attacks by Israel, the spokesperson also warned that Hamas would turn Gaza into a graveyard and a quagmire for Israeli forces. Let's go for a short commercial break. More world news on the other side. Welcome back. Apple is bringing the new M3 chip series to the MacBook Pro. The laptop is being made faster, more powerful and more efficient thanks to the addition of three new chip options across the M3 family. The new flagship chip family, the M3, will be made up of the standard M3, the M3 Pro and the M3 Max. Apple has unveiled new laptops and doubled down on its own in-house chips. At an event Monday in California, the tech giant showed off a range of new MacBook and iMac computers. It also has a new family of chips, dubbed M3, to power the devices. The silicon features upgraded graphics processing abilities, a move that takes the fight to Nvidia, which dominates the market for graphics chips. Apple chief executive Tim Cook had big claims to make. They are the most advanced chips ever created for a personal computer. taking the best pro laptops in the world and making them even better. Apple has seen its laptop business boom since 2020 when it parted ways with Intel and started making its own chips. Industry analysts IDC say the firm has roughly doubled its market share. The new chips use designs from ARM Holdings and outperform machines using Microsoft's Windows on some tasks. Cook says no one can rival Apple's ability to design hardware, software and chips in-house. This deep integration is something only Apple can deliver. And we never stop innovating. Apple did not say which firm is making its new chips, but analysts say it's likely to be Taiwan giant TSMC. US presidential election updates on the road to the White House now.
According to a new poll, former President Donald Trump currently holds majority support in the early primary state of South Carolina, with Nikki Haley, the state's former governor, being his strongest challenger. 53% of likely Republican primary voters in South Carolina called Trump their first choice for the 2024 GOP presidential nomination. South Carolina is one of the earliest contests on the GOP nominating calendar next year. It's going to hold its Republican primary on the 24th of February after Iowa, New Hampshire and Nevada. Though broad, Trump's support in South Carolina falls slightly shy of his even wider leads over the field in the recent polls nationally and in Nevada. Recent polling in New Hampshire and Iowa finds Trump with narrower support in those two states where several of his rivals are hoping for a strong showing. But echoing the dynamics of the primary campaign nationally, Trump's base of support in South Carolina is far more solid than his rival's pool of core supporters. South Carolina has not voted for a Democrat for president in a general election since Jimmy Carter's victory there in 1976. We were more than just castmates, we are a family. This is one riveting line from the statement released by Matthew Perry's heartbroken Friends co-stars on mourning their friend. The five actors say that they will say more when they are able, but that for now, they are grieving. They defined a decade, friends close on screen and off it. It was an incredible time. We became best friends. Now Matthew Perry's co-stars are in mourning. We are all so utterly devastated by the loss of Matthew. We were more than just castmates. We are a family. Describing it as an unfathomable loss, they say our thoughts and our love are with Matty's family, his friends and everyone who loved him around the world. Perry's long battle with addiction pained his mates. Nobody had ever dealt with, with that. And, you know, it's the idea of even losing him. But as the show bowed out, they lifted him up. And I'm so proud of him. He's so strong. Matthew Perry's assistant of seven years, Brianna Brancato, declared, you'll forever be in my heart, as the LA Fire Department confirmed an assistant found him underwater in his spa, unresponsive, lifting his head to try and save him. I don't know what I'm going to do, not seeing you every single day. A sentiment felt by friends, family and fans. Over in Spain now, according to an independent commission, more than 200,000 minors were estimated to have been sexually abused in Spain by the Roman Catholic clergy since 1940. Spain's Catholic Church apologised to victims of sexual abuse by priests on Tuesday. But the country's bishops' conference questioned the accuracy of a new survey, suggesting the abuse was far more widespread nationwide than previous investigations had found. Conference chairman Cardinal Juan José Omeya spoke to reporters on Tuesday. We don't know how they did the survey or what kind of questions they asked. That is to say, there is an opacity, opacity in reaching a conclusion that is not logical. We do not see it as logical. Spain's human rights ombudsman has criticized the conference for not cooperating more fully with the investigation. Its report found that 0.6% of a sample of just over 8,000 respondents said they had been abused. That rose to 1.1% when including lay people such as teachers at Catholic schools. The ombudsman acknowledged that such an extrapolation might not be accurate, but said the percentages gave an idea of what it can mean in terms of overall abuse. The results of the survey suggest that more than one in 200 Spaniards may have been abused. Following an extraordinary meeting, the Spanish Bishops' Conference expressed its pain for the damage caused by some church members. Yes. What they have experienced is awful, and when they tell you, you get goosebumps. I think that is very important because we empathize. We do not always manage to empathize, but I believe it is a call to empathize. Second, to be able to support them in that pain, and third, to give hope. And lastly, and above all, what to do so that this does not happen again. The church has faced sexual abuse scandals in several countries, including the United States, Ireland and France over the past decades. But the issue only surfaced for public debate in Spain following a landmark investigation in 2021, which identified more than 1,200 alleged cases. 
An internal church investigation published in June identified 728 alleged abusers and 927 victims there since the 1940s. Welcome back. Heavy smog enveloped the Chinese capital, Beijing. For more on that story and much more, let's take you around the world. Britain's King Charles arrived in Kenya for a four-day state visit and he is expected to acknowledge painful aspects and the brutal suppression of the Mao Mao revolt in the UK's colonial past. Police shot a critically wounded a hijab-wearing woman in the Paris metro station yesterday. The woman has behaved in a threatening manner before being shot. Spain's Princess of Astoria's Leonor marked her 18th birthday yesterday and she swore allegiance to the country's constitution before lawmakers in parliament. A wildfire in southwest Los Angeles has forced over 4,000 people to evacuate. Officials of Riverside County said yesterday that the blaze had spread over 2,200 acres of land. The smog enveloped the Chinese capital Beijing today. The authorities have issued the highest warnings in major northern cities and warned the public that visibility could drop to less than 50 meters. And that is all we have for you on World News Tonight. Join us again tomorrow as we bring you updates from across the globe. If you missed any of today's programs, you can always re-watch by catching us on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash English. We're leaving you tonight in Lagos, Nigeria, as models were designs made with raffia and the local tie-dye fabric, which strutted the runway at the 13th edition of the Lagos Fashion Week. Thank you for watching. Have a great night.